Hi, I'm Stavros. Good morning and welcome. And yes, you can see the title in the video. I have just bought a 40 year old Honda Civic. So let's do the big reveal. Let's swing over and yes, this is it. It's a 1.3 liter, five speed, uh, around 69 horsepower. Not very powerful. <laughs> So I'll be showing you a full look around my 40 year old Honda Civic and then we'll be going inside the showroom having a look at some more cars and then I have an update on a truck to show you guys in this video. So stick around for that. Anyway, let me show you around. Okay, taking a look around my 1980 Honda Civic. A real classic guys, what do you think? I <laughs> anyway, we'll see how it goes. But it's in pretty good condition. I mean, it's not exactly concours or pristine condition, but it's a good start. If you're doing up a Honda Civic, uh, this would be a good one to start with. So we have the 12 inch wheels. If I compare it to this brand new Honda Civic, we have 17 inch wheels. That badge will definitely be taken off because they were not stuck on there from new. Five door example in from Malta. So yeah, it's in pretty good condition. Let me just bend down and give you a look underneath just to give you an idea of the condition. Yeah, I had a good look underneath. It's pretty good now as regards rust. It's a very good example, not too bad. So let me just open up the boot first and it is a five speed. So yeah, this is a second generation Honda Civic and the first generation only had a four speed gearbox so yeah the rust is uh, pretty much non-existent in here maybe just a tiny little bit of staining underneath the spare wheel but yeah we've got the jack there and you see the back seats as well look if you're not carrying anyone in the back you can just notch this just forward just to give you a bit more space in the boot now they did fit an aftermarket stereo it's a pioneer stereo so uh, yeah, it would have been nicer to have the original one, but there you go. They also put in those speakers. So yeah, who knows, maybe might have to get rid of that <laughs> system and put in an old system. We'll see. And of course you can fold the seat the whole way back as well. So let's just knock that back. Even the, uh, the tailgate here, no rust at all on the tailgate. That's fantastic. Just close it up there. All the lights are working as well. Uh, this car has passed its NCT. It's insured and taxed. And I just need to get a loan of a holder. <laughs> just to, Brian's gonna give me a holder to put in all my documents. So let me just open up the, actually I'll just show you the engine first, just to give you a look at the condition. So yeah, not too bad. Now I've already driven this about 20 miles already. Uh, sorry, 40 miles, what am I talking about? From Dublin Airport, that's where I picked it up. Uh, from an independent dealer. Uh, not much rust at all. Just probably a bit of surface rust. Just on the headlights there. But yeah, that's uh, very happy with that. And when you're closing it, just knock in the middle of it there. So yeah, I'm just going to hop in. And actually, I'll show you the back first. Just to show you the condition. Now there is one little bit of a tear right there on the seats. That's the only tear on the whole interior and the headlining there all in good nick. It would be nice to give it a really good clean on the interior. So let me just show you the carpet underneath here as well. Yeah, not so bad. Winding windows, of course. <laughs> uh, back to the old school. Let me just hop inside and you can see the mileage there, 73961. Uh, now whether that's 173,000, I've no idea. <laughs> yeah, but I've clocked up 40 miles already on this. Driving from Dublin Airport down to Kildare. And we even have the manual here as well. The original Honda Civic manual, that's always nice to have. So very good for the owner to hold on to that. So yeah, it's uh, let me just pull up the uh, the mat here as well. So I've been told that the mats are in the car from new, but I don't know. It's hard to believe some of this. But uh, let me just show you the five-speed gearbox. It's a far cry from the Honda Civics of today, where they're very slick and beautiful to use. But this one's uh, got a fair bit of play in it, guys. Uh, 
But anyway, that's it. That's the way it was back in the 80s. Yeah, <laughs> kind of weird driving a car um, long before I even had a, a license to drive. But there's the Pioneer unit and your ashtray there. So I'm just going to start it up just to give you a bit of a sound of the engine. Now I have the choke pulled out because it is, uh, if I were to push in the choke now, it would just conk out. So yeah, it takes a bit of a while to warm up. Now I did notice on the drive down that the temperature gauge is not working. So that's not a help to me at all. <laughs> so uh, let's just give it a couple of revs here. I am in yeah, neutral there. There we go. Yeah, there's not much smoke coming out of the back now. Just a small little bit of smoke, but it's not that smoky. So let me just put back in the choke and just see, will it uh, say start it on its own? Will it? Will it? Yes, there we go. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm happy enough, guys. Uh, we don't have any left side mirror, but over your shoulder, you know, it's great. You can see everything around you, so it's not really an issue having, uh, not having <laughs> a passenger side mirror. But yeah, that is my latest purchase, this 1980 Honda Civic. Okay, so I'm joined now by Brian from Fitzpatrick Garages here in Kildare. Brian, how are you getting on? Good to see you. Thank you very much for having me here today. So Brian's just going to be showing us around the Civic, the new one. We've got a 1.5 turbo outside here and you also have the one with the 9-speed gearbox. 9-speed diesel and you yeah. know that turbo car fairly well as well already. You yes. might be familiar with that type of vehicle. Yes, I have one myself. <laughs> exactly, yeah, savage car. But guys, we're going to hop inside and just go down through all the interior features just to show you how the Civic has evolved. Okay, Brian, we're sitting in the 1.5 turbo. This is the hatchback. So yeah, so Brian, what is standard on the Civic now? You have the safety suite, Honda Sensing. Yeah, um, what is standard? How long have you got, Stav? How long have you got? <laughs> that is the thing here, so. Yeah, right. they're great for the standard equipment now, the Civic. Yeah, um, yeah. a lot of people, what they used to say was, they'd come in and they'd ask about Golf, or they'd ask about Civic, and then they'd talk about Golfs and Focuses. If you literally get a sheet of paper and write down everything that's standard on the car, it's actually brilliant value for money, but even, okay, small things, big screen in the center, everyone likes a big screen these days. The first thing is you've got a big camera there, and then you've got sensors front and rear, and you know, there's different functions on the, on the reverse camera. After that then, up through here, navigation, which is Garmin, but to be fair, these days, most people are going to use Apple CarPlay and Android yes. Auto and that kind of stuff. And that's where you get into the car saying, Google, where is the closest airport? Where is the closest, you know, petrol station, wherever it is. Yeah. It's so cool. Um, after that, then audio stuff. So you can Bluetooth music, you can use USB, you can use your uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto or whatever you want. Uh, and there's two USB uh, centers in the car as well. General settings overall, but even everything is adjustable using the screen. So that's how people think these days. Yeah. They think using screens. Um, so after that then, moving down through here, electronic handbrake, some people fear them. You had a normal handbrake in your old car. I yes. know you drive the trucks and stuff, so you're probably well used to this. They're simple, aren't they? And yeah, you do get easy. into the habit. Yeah. Uh, after that then, economy function, which is going to reduce, and this is all standard stuff, by the way. Mm. It reduces how aggressive the cruise control is, how aggressive the air conditioner yeah. is. Moving over here, automatic headlights, they dip when they meet traffic. They come on at night time. They do it all themselves. The wipers on a day like today, they work themselves too. What's cool in here is the way the trip information works, right? Now, I am an idiot, so I love the fact that I can see how much boost pressure the oh, car right, is running. Okay. So when you floor the car, you can see what the boost is at. But for a lot of people, they want to know about fuel. And actually, the thing about them is, in fairness on fuel, most people in a car like this with 180 horsepower, they'll average about kind of 45 miles per gallon, something like that. Yeah. All, everything, by the way, is standard that we're talking about on a 1.5 Civic. Over here, the safety stuff, okay? So your cruise control, okay, lots of cars have cruise control, yeah. but it follows the car in front. You can have a lane keep, which keeps you within the lanes. The speed limiter will read the speed signs, and then it'll actually limit your speed varying on the last speed sign that it saw. Yeah. So uh, I presume yeah. yours is, is, is an attempt, or it's a guess <laughs> as to where... I don't know, I know, no, it's fine. Yeah. You could find the gear yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. But no, yeah. it is. But everyone says on these, and anyone that reads the independent reviews, everyone says they're a sweet gearbox because they actually are really good at making nice gearboxes. Mm. And we also have the white one beside us, Brian. That is the one with the nine-speed gearbox. Yeah, so a diesel car, yeah. identical inside, but down through here. So we have six-speed uh, six gearbox we talked about. The other car, buttons, park, reverse, neutral, drive. Nine-speed gearbox, so the manual one, six-speed box. The nine-speed gets up to the 
uh, rev or, well, it, it goes from 0 to 100 a lot quicker than the manual version. Mm. It can change gears more efficiently and quicker than the manual, and it makes it more fun to drive. Yeah. Uh, the 9 speed, though, to be fair, they are mechanical 9 gears in oh the diesel, yeah. so it is pretty okay. cool. Uh, you need to be doing about 400 mile an hour to get into ninth gear. Right. But, uh, <laughs> but I think it'll sit around seventh or eighth on a motorway, ah, you know, that yeah, sort okay. of way. Autobahn stuff maybe ninth, but not yeah. in Ireland. Uh, but they are, look, I love these cars. This is generation 10. Your car is 1980. Second gen. Uh, exactly, yeah. so you got a gen 10 and you got a second gen as well yourself. Mm. So you'll see there's been such an evolution, but like it's been such a popular car over the years. I, you probably did the same. We grew up with these kind of cars. Yeah. These were the cool cars. And what I like about these 1.5s, like what you have, they're like what the VTIs were years ago. Something slightly different, quick, easy to run, looks a little bit different, but it's not in your face. Yeah. You know, that sort of way. So that's, that's this is my favorite car of anything we've ever sold anyway, so. Yeah, you do have to rev them a bit hard though to yeah. get into the performance. They are 180 horsepower. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, you do have to rev them hard, though. You do? Okay, fair yeah. enough. Up around four and a half. You had a, D, you had a 2.2, which is a little torquey kind of engine, yeah. and you had 340 newton meters. This mm. is 240 newton meters, so it's a lot less torque, yeah. but you have higher rev range. You're right, yeah, you need to go up around four and a half, five. But then again, you know, is that a bad thing sometimes? <laughs> <laughs> so that's where I'd look at it. Okay, so we're going to leave the Civics. Nine-speed gearbox, as Brian said, 1.5 turbo, nine-speed diesel. So, okay, Brian, let's walk through let's the look. showroom real quick. On a day like today, this is quite useful. It's an umbrella, right? I know. <laughs> Over there, Jazz, right? Oh, yeah. New model this year, new model hybrid only. After that, then CRV, right? Yeah. This is true. World's best selling SUV. World's, World's best. best selling SUV. Bar none. Bar none. The the CRV. CRV, two liter hybrid, lots of different models on them. And yeah. they're only getting going because they're only out of about a year. And you know, you get the, the word in the street with people. Yeah, very HRV nice. over here, people really like them. If you had an SUV, that's high off the ground, but it's not big and bulky. That's the one. And we actually sell a lot of automatics of those. Yeah. Uh, and then the Civic we talked about, sedan, hatchback, yeah. and they are going to be still 1.6 diesel, one liter petrol, and 1.5 petrol. So it means, and do you know what, right? Saloon cars. So there's a lot of saloon cars that are disappearing out of the market. We still have something, and it's diesel. And yeah. a lot of people still need a diesel saloon car. Um, let's go up and have a look at the, yeah. the Hyundai stuff as well. So this is the Honda area, obviously. Um, and then after that, this garage is here 70 years, 70 years. But Brian, um, Brian, I think Honda want people to get away from diesel because if you were looking at the I power, do, yeah. at the yeah. power that I had in the 2.2 diesel, which is around 148 yeah. horsepower. Um, I mean, what's next in that bracket from Honda regarding the Civic? You have to jump to the 1.5 turbo. 1.5 turbo for power. Yeah, and it is petrol. Yeah. I think 2022, to be fair, they do stop making mm. diesel cars. Because um, if you go down to the 1.6 diesel, you're down to... 120. Yeah. But the only thing is, do remember, right? 120, it's 300 newton meters of torque and you 340. It's not terribly far off because it's a really yeah. light engine. Yeah. Drive one. You'll see. Okay. The, um, <laughs> <All right>. the <laughs> other thing... <laughs> and, Brian was telling me he gets in a whole load of spare wheels because yeah. people are never done curbing their wheels. When you were buying your car, one of the things I said to you, right, check it for what you call yeah. it, right? Anyone wants wheels, right? We got loads of them. Okay? All right, yeah. But no, they're just really wide. But that's one of the reasons the new one looks cool because yeah. the wheels are wide. But so 1,000 euro wheels and tires for them. Wheels and tires. Yeah. Wheels and tires. I okay. think it's good at value. Okay. And actually, they'll fit the model that you had if you All want. Right. So you can upgrade the old model. So look really cool. Yeah. Ionic EV. Yeah. Um, so fully electric, 38 kilowatt battery. 320 range realistically right by the time you put on the heat and all that stuff mm. 270 ish is where you're going to be with it cool looking car that's a premium so it's got the big 10 inch screen in the center so it's quite cool looking actually yeah. um cool. and then you've got the kona which i'll show you in a sec which is the big kona's really cool 64 kilowatt battery that's nearly 200 horsepower it's a really nice car actually in how it accelerates and i know that's not why people buy them but <laughs> right, let's have a look <laughs> it is cool all right so moving down into where you had honda down below and then you've got a transition here the next one tucson yeah. Three years in a row, 16, 17, 18, the best-selling car in Ireland. Still the best-selling SUV in Ireland as well. Is it? Ah, yeah. yeah. Like, see, loads of people like them because they do everything for everyone. They're high off the ground. They look nice. They've got a long warranty. They're reliable. There's good specs. So it kind of, it's a bit of one of those things that does everything for everyone. And that's why I was saying to you, the saloon car is disappearing a bit because people are buying that kind of stuff as well. Yeah. It's a good-looking car. Uh, even a car like that, standard with 19-inch wheels. So it looks really cool. Yeah. This one here is i20. Uh, i20, new model coming actually in about three months time, um, but they sold really, really well for us. Um, again, long warranty, reasonable kind of payments per month, and they did good scrappage deals on them as well. All right. Um, Kona, Kona cut four fuel types, so four fuel types overall. Um, so petrol, diesel, 
and there's hybrid and there's electric. iX20 over here, not a pretty car, but a really functional car. Um, the driver's seat in them, genuinely sitting on them. So the rest of it is very functional and practical of how it works. But the driver's seat is savage in those. It is, I don't know why, it's whatever way they've managed to make it, it's just a really comfortable seat to sit in. Very good. And again, as I said, not a pretty car, but really, really practical. Yeah. Um, and after that then, i10, a real chic looking kind of car. Um, mm. We did a lot of them on scrappage deals over the years. Again, very low finance payments. And now you're seeing people moving from those into the newer ones. So they're continuing on with i10 because they were happy with them. It's a good looking car. Like you're starting off around 14, 15 grand. So why would you buy a second hand car if you're looking for a small car like? Yeah. And finishing off with Kona the Kona. Yeah. Right. I want you to drive one of them. I, you've probably done a bit with the keys. I didn't stuff. have. Yeah. <laughs> 64 I did one already, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. unbelievable power. And that's not why you buy one. But mm. okay, really, right? People are actually getting 400 kilometers range out of the charge. So a nine hour charge from your house. But um, there is people that are doing 200 kilometers a day. So they're charging the car every second or third day. Yeah. Um, but it's a really nice car to drive. And it's nice to buy into that kind of electric, uh, uh, I suppose, green agenda. But as I was saying to you overall, we have every fuel type here. So you can actually make a really informed decision. Uh, 400 range, they quote 475, but we have people doing 400. And that's people going up and down to Dublin on the motorway doing 120, 370, 380. Mm -hmm. So actually, no, it is, it is viable. And I'm confident to say it to people. So uh, yeah. good old car, they drive well. They drive well, so they do. But again, like I was saying to you, electric's not for everyone. That's why we still have every fuel type here anyway, so. Yeah. Uh, but that's it, I suppose. And it must be very confusing for people at the moment buying cars because they've been told so many things and, uh, you know, buy electric and buy this. I get literally, and most lads should be doing it, you get every fuel type, you write down your cost of running, and then you calculate it out. And after that, there's more to it, like what you say. You have to like what you're buying as well, so. Yeah. Okay, guys, it's time for me to leave Fitzpatrick's Garages here in Kildare. Brian, thank you very much. Thanks a million for coming in. Yeah. Sorry, I know I do go on a bit, but uh, <laughs> appreciate your time for anyone watching. So we just have the red one here, parked beside my 40 year old. I really have to hit the road. We need to go down to DPS Communications to look at a truck that's had its cameras fitted, phone fitted, and an inverter. We need to do that right now. Let's hit the road. Thanks, Brian. Let's go. <laughs> Come on, am I, in, am I even in first gear? Yeah, I'm in first. Okay, mind the coffee. That's priority number one. No cup holders. We just have this shelf for a cup holder. So uh, yeah, nice and easy. So yeah, I've now clocked up, what have I clocked up? 47 miles in my 40 year old Civic. Okay, 1.3 liter, come on. 69 horses, come on, fifth gear. Very close to my knee. <laughs> and we're up to 50 miles an hour on the motorway, come on. <laughs> okay, 55. And 60. 60, there we go, guys. Yeah, so, okay. Uh, now, comparing it to my own Civic, guys. I mean, come on, there's no comparison. No comparison. <laughs> the two cars are on two different planets. But, I mean, for its time, it was a very good car. This second generation Civic, uh, the wipers are very noisy. <laughs> very noisy. But it's driving away fine. Now, I'm just gonna push back in the choke. I just put a bit of petrol into it, just enough to get me to Ennis. Got myself a coffee there as well. But yeah, it's cruising away quite nicely. But the brakes, the brakes are not good, guys. Uh, I have to get them looked at. They're a bit spongy. Um, maybe I'm just too used to all the newer cars. When you hop into a car this old, they're just so, you gotta press the pedal really hard. But yeah, I'm very happy with it. Uh, gear changes. Well, you can find them. <laughs> Five gears. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna make my way down to Ennis. A lot of wind noise coming up around this corner. I don't know, is the door closing properly? But uh, yeah, it should be okay. And I just need to do the update on that truck I showed you some weeks ago, guys, yeah? With the cameras getting fitted and all that. So we're heading straight down to DPS 
I probably have another, I don't know, 90, 100 miles maybe around that. So yeah, let's get down there and show you what this truck is like all finished. Fast forward about 125 miles later and I'm down here in DPS. So we'll go inside, have a chat with Darren and yeah, we'll see what progress is being made on the truck, guys. Okay, so most important of all is that I have my coffee. Thanks, Darren. <laughs> yes, we're nearly finished, guys. So let me walk around and just show you the progress being made on the Rory Lynch Transport S580. Okay, some of you will remember the video I shot of this truck at uh, DPS. So if you want to see the full video of that, just click on the link up here and you can watch that video. I'm just here today to give you an update as to how all the cameras look and the monitor on the inside. So yeah, we've got the camera fitted there to the bottom of the mirror. And if I walk over here, one fitted on the left hand side as well. And there's also a camera at the top of the windscreen uh, for the view forward. And let me just open up the locker here and I'm just going to show you what Darren has fitted. Uh, that is the inverter fitted, okay? So that is a 3000 watt inverter with peak power of 6000 watts. So a very powerful inverter there. And you see the way Darren has mounted it to that bar. So it's keeping it really in place there. Uh, mounted to that so that's very good and let me just move around here to the battery so Darren has fitted this cable all along here and to the battery and also you see the plastic connection there he has fitted that as well and uh, I showed you uh, in the previous video he has the fuse box in here so if anything does blow you'll be able to change the fuse there and the cable going into the cab so you'll be able to disconnect from the cab completely so if you ever are doing any work on the battery, you can just unplug that and it'll keep everything nice and safe that you won't blow anything in the cab. And there at the back as well, we have the Scania Vabis badge from 1911 when the two companies merged and Rory Lynch Transport, 40 years in business in 2020. So yeah, the 4x2 Scania with a sliding fifth wheel. And yeah, I'm just going to walk around into the cab now and just give you a look at what else Darren has done inside. So with the inverter, he's fitted uh, two three pin sockets. OK, so we have this one here that will plug into a coffee maker and also another three pin socket down here as well. So very neat and tidy. And also uh, the inverter, you'll be able to switch it on and off with this switch here. So that will be mounted up there. Darren has yet to finish that. And there's a little light on it as well that will tell you when it's on. So it's very handy to know because the inverter will draw a small bit from the battery. So you need to be able to switch it off. And let me just walk around here and sit into the driver's seat. So Darren has also fitted the phone very good. And I'm just gonna turn on the ignition and we can see all the monitors here uh, tech vehicle okay so we have the four different monitors monitoring and if darren just closes the door there we'll be able to see that angle I'm of that of that uh monitor on the left hand side so yeah very good for keeping an eye on your blind spots now you see this monitor here that's on the back of the cab just uh your view to the fifth wheel so that's fantastic, really like that. And very neatly done, Darren, at the back here. Look, the way that it's mounted. So that was nice and tidy, Darren. <laughs> we do our best. <laughs> okay, and if I switch the indicator to the left-hand side, you'll see there as well, we have the full view for the left-hand side monitor. So all very well done. Now, there's still some more cables to be tied up now you'll remember the last time I showed you this 
Darren had it all torn apart. The whole dashboard <laughs> was torn apart. But uh, it's an awful lot of work to take on. Uh, anything to do with electronics, Darren. Sure is. <laughs> yeah. And Darren has also fitted the aerial for the phone up on the roof as well. So this gives it better coverage uh, rather than mounted at the side of the truck. So please do come to DPS Communications in Ennis for all your electronic needs, whether it's stereos, reversing cameras, reversing sensors. Darren fits it all here, okay? And all the cameras and the whole lot. It's all done here at DPS Communications. So Darren, that's a wrap. That's a wrap. Let's go home <laughs> Yeah, we, 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 we gotta go guys, we're done here today. I do hope you enjoyed the video looking at my 40 year old Honda Civic. Yes, um, let's see what, I, what plans I have for that for the future. So stay tuned for that one guys. I'm gonna leave you all there. Thank you very much for watching and I'll chat to you all again next weekend for another video. Take care guys, thanks, cheers! It's time to drive down home. In the no, no, we're not going home yet. What the <laughs> and yes, as the name suggests, oh god, here Fitzpatrick's garage, County Kildare. That's exactly it. No, not County K in Kildare. <laughs> yeah, well, it's County Kildare, yeah, exactly. <laughs>